it's that time again for me to tell you about three more books that I've read so far in 2019. And I have stuff to say, so let me tell ya. Come on. <laughs> channel it's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? I hope you guys are doing fantastic. I have to say I have been reading, reading, reading. Now this is going to be a read and reviewed. Now I haven't done one in a while um, because I've sort of done other things that are like read and reviewed. So if you guys haven't had a chance please check out my video where I review both um, Jacqueline Woodson's Red at the Bone and Margaret Wilkerson Sexton's um, the Revisionaries. It's a read and reviewed, but it's a solo review of those two books, which are both fantastic, and so both be on your TBRs if they are not already. Um, I also have been reading the National Book Award long list. I did a video of that, and there are five of those books, um, so check out that video. It's not going to have its own read and reviewed, but that's five more books that I've read this year that I'm telling you guys about. So I definitely have been reading, and today I'm going to talk about three more. So as always, get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your pen, get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads, however you keep track of your TBR. As always, if you can, please order these books from your local independent bookstore. And if you can't, have your library order them for you so you can get your hands on them. However you get your books, I want you guys to be reading them and I want you to talk to me all about it. So the first book I'm going to tell you about is interesting. This is coming from the Amazon Publishing Group. Now, I don't get a lot of books from Amazon. I don't order a lot of books from Amazon. But I have noticed that they are publishing some really good stuff. Um, Christine, uh, Christina, Kristen, Kristen? Kristen Chen's book that I read last year, Burry, and I can't remember the title, and I'm so sorry, but that was published by Little A, which is Amazon's publishing group. And they have an entire section of the publishing group that is dedicated to publishing translated fiction and that's how I got my hands on A Fist or a Heart by Kristen Eriks Doder translated by Larissa Kaiser and this is translated from the Icelandic. Now I know you guys probably know this you're bookish people but Iceland has more authors and more pu published books per capita than any country in the world and they do a lot of amazing stuff with literature in their uh, country. It's a little tiny country compared to the United States but they produce a ton of stuff and I haven't read a ton of Icelandic fiction. Actually I don't think I've read a lot as in any other than this one um, but I loved this book. So let me tell you the premise. So we have two main characters really. So we have an older woman whose job it is is to make props. She makes props for plays, she makes props for TV movies, she makes props for movies, and she has been around for a very long time. And she is asked at the very beginning of the book to work on a play, a play by a young, young playwright, I think she's 19, um, that is coming to be produced. But the playwright is actually the daughter of a very, very famous writer who has passed. And sort of that's connection. And our main character knows or knew um, this writer. So there's a connection between these two. Now, the older woman lives by herself, sort of in a solitude. She doesn't have a ton of relationships and becomes infatuated with the young writer. Now, the young writer has her own sort of social anxiety, and she's dealing with the fact that she doesn't want to be present as her play is being produced and she struggles with the criticism and she struggles with the feedback and she struggles giving input herself because of a lot of stuff that's going on. What this book is, it's really a dialogue, dialogue between the two of them that's not directed at either of them as they discuss their relationships with the work that they are producing for each other and with each other and also their histories and how those are going to come together. I said when I mentioned this book in my haul that I had read it, and it reminded me a little bit of two authors. Now, the first author it reminded me of was Amelie Notham, uh, the French author. And that is because you know how she's a bit quirky and everything's just a little bit left of center? This book is a bit quirky. Like, there's are parts of it that are just a little bit off, 
but it's off in such an interesting way that you're really drawn into the characters. And you guys know I love myself a 70-year-old woman, so it's coming highly recommended. Two, it reminds me of the work of Nilan Kundera. Now, I haven't read Nilan Kundera anything recently, but I used to read a ton of him. And I used to always have a feeling that he had sort of this omniscient voice through a character teaching and per giving teaching a lesson and giving perspective. And that sort of omniscient third party, but is also speaking through the voice of a character, is something I always really appreciated about his genius. Um, and I hope that makes sense. And I feel that in this book. The, uh, the woman, the older woman, sort of is analyzing the world in such a way is that she's giving a unique perspective um, on everything, but also analyzing herself and trying to connect with this young woman. Um, I really, really enjoyed this, and I hope I sold it to you, um, because I really feel like this is a book more people should read. And I haven't read a lot of Icelandic fiction, so if you haven't either, this is a great place to start. So that is A Fist or a Heart by Kristen Eric's Daughter, translated from the Icelandic by Larissa Kaiser. Really, really enjoyed this, I have to be honest. The next book I read was, it was a little bit everywhere there for a bit, and I think you can see another review of this on Kendra's channel over at Kendra Winchester. So check her out too, because my review is going to be a little bit different. And that is Hollow Kingdom by Kira Jane Buxton. Now, what is this book? This book is a zombie apocalypse book told from the perspective of domesticated and wild animals. Well, really from domesticated animals, but the domesticated animals run into wild animals as well. So humanity has become zombies, and from the main character of this book is St. He is a raven who was rescued by a man who raised him, and he is very, very connected to. The man also has a, um, I want to say it's a basset hound, um, but it's a, a dog that ST is very connected to, and when their um, their human becomes um, in, infected, uh, ST takes over, sort of taking care. And their goal, they, his really his goal is to find a cure to bring his human back. He loved his life and he misses it. The book also has different chapters from different perspectives of different animals. This to sort of give you a, a different idea, a different voice. Now. Um, this book is very funny. There's a dark, dark sense of humor to it, and I think if you enjoy sort of that dark sense of humor, y you'll like this book. To me, it just, there was a point in it where I just got tired of it. I felt it was a little bit repetitive, and I am a bleeding heart for an animal. You guys know this. You know that I have my five fur babies. I talk about how much I love them. Um, there, there's just a lot of dogs that die in this and other animals that die in this. And it got really hard for me to continue to read the story because I'd fall sort of infatuation with this character, which would be a little animal, a dog um, or something else. And it would be, it would lose its life. And I, I just couldn't handle it. So for me, it's not a book for me because it hits certain triggers for me. Um, there's also a lot of crude humor in this book, and though I can find it funny at times, if it continues on and on and on, it sort of becomes exhaustive to me. So I think this is a good book. I think this is a book a lot of people would really enjoy. This is not a Russell book. Um, but I'm really glad I read it. I really thank Grand Central Publishing for sending me this finished copy. Um, I enjoyed bits and pieces of it. I think the premise is pretty freaking brilliant. Um, it just wasn't a book for me for those two reasons. It was a little too crude at times, and I just don't deal with animals being hurt. Um, eventually, it just broke me down. So there you go. If you're not sensitive like me and you like crude humor, I think you will love this book. If you want to, the blurb on the back says that it's as, um, The Walking Dead Meets The Secret Life of Pets. If that entertains you, I definitely think you would like this book. Um, I definitely think this book has an audience, and I think people should read it. It just shouldn't be me. So there you go. That's Hollow Kingdom by Kira Jane Buxton. Last but not least, in any way, shape, or form, is the stunning, stunning memoir, How We Fight for Our Lives by Saeed Jones. 
this book should be on your TBR and you absolutely, absolutely should read it. Now, I've already talked about this book in my five recommended memoir books, books, video, and five recommended memoirs. Um, so if you watch that, I've already talked about this and sort of gushed about it, but I'm going to do it again here. Saeed Jones has created a memoir where he discusses his um, blackness in America, his queerness in America, his growing up in Louisville, Texas, his college time in Western Kentucky University, his sexual awakening, his sexual coming out. Very much this is a book about the relationship about a young man and his mother. He is raised by a single woman. She is doing all she can to raise him. They deal with poverty. They deal with um, their, uh, their Buddhist, which is really fascinating. I didn't even talk about that in the other video. But she is Buddhist and how that um, creates sort of the atmosphere in which they live. Um, it is also a relationship between Saeed and his grandmother, who he goes and visits quite often until she realizes that he is a gay man. And that sort of puts, she is very religious, very church going. She tries to save her grandson. It doesn't work the way she thinks it should. And it causes a split between them. Um, it is, it's just about a man dealing with who he is. But what Saeed does amazingly as well is that he puts into context what he's going through with some of the um, events that have occurred in time. And I apologize, I don't remember everyone's names, but he talks about um, um, the shooting of young African-American boys um, and the travest tra travesty of that and these innocent children dying and how that affects him and informs him regarding race in America. And also he talks about the Matthew Shepard murder and how that informs him as a queer in America. Um, and in putting those things into perspective, he adds to his own story and development and adds sort of this layer of complexity that is just brilliant. Now, he is also a poet by trade and he is a phenomenal writer. However, I will tell you guys right now, this is a heart-wrenching book. I was bawling at the end of this book. And it is not if for the light of hearted, but I will tell you, my friend Emily Fine from the Book Cokers loved this book. I love this book. I'm telling you to read this book. And that's How We Fight for Our Lives by Saeed Jones. I, th I don't see how this can't be in my top 10 at the end of the year. But there are so many great books this year I'm going to have to call. But this is certainly in contention. Um, how We Fight for Our Lives. It's out now. You can get your hands on it by Saeed Jones. So that is three, oh, three more books that I have read in 2019. Dropping stuff everywhere today. I hope that every single one of them winds up on your TBR. If they sound like a book that you will love, go get them, read them, talk to me about them. As always, if you are a return subscriber, I could not do this without you. Thank you so much. If you are new to my channel, I hope you come back for more recommendations and reviews. As always, I encourage you to shop locally, read globally. Until next time, happy reading. Bye!